everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and in today's video, we are having fun with four chicken freezer meals from this cookbook, Don't Panic, Dinners in the Freezer. One of the main videos you all have been asking me for is more freezer meals, and why not? Because freezer meals are so convenient especially during the holiday season or during particularly busy seasons of your life, like school starting up, uh, Thanksgiving, the Christmas whole like two months of Christmas, right? Where you're just busy doing anything and everything. And you just want to have some really quick and easy dinners you can pull out and just bake and be done with it. So I thought I would pull out one of the cookbooks from my bookshelf. And like I said, it is called Don't Panic Dinners in the Freezer. There are so many amazing recipes in here. And listen, the best part about it is that it shows you the recipe right here, but then it'll also show you if you want to like double, triple, even six or nine times the recipe. It's got that for every single one of them. That way you can make multiple batches and put them in the freezer. That way you have like all this food ready for you at a later date. And as you can see, I've got plenty of little post-its here with all the recipes that I want to do. So I polled you guys or also like Instagram and Facebook and other places and said, hey, which freezer meals do you want to see first? And everybody said they wanted to see the chicken ones first. So I made four of the chicken recipes out of this cookbook. And my plan was to do like an entire series and do like the beef and pork and like the breads and desserts and soups and things like that. But I'm going to put that on hold for a little bit because I've got something very special coming to you guys in November and you guys are going to love it. So I wanted to get the chicken one out as soon as possible before that happened. That way you guys can start filling your freezer just a little bit before my awesome series that is coming in November. You can probably guess what it's going to be. So I definitely learned a lot from making these recipes just in like how much it actually made. I didn't read the instructions very well, uh, but you'll see that here in a minute. So I started with like nine pounds of split chicken breast, stuck them in the slow cooker for a little bit, which I will show you here in a minute. And a couple of the freezer meals were made using that chicken as well as some stuff I found in the freezer. So let me show you the four meals that I made. So I started out by cooking about nine pounds of split chicken breasts and the split ones have the bone in so I will have to shred them by hand once they're done. But I put all nine pounds in my instant pot slash slow cooker at the same time. Probably shouldn't have done that but they still cooked. I added about a cup of water and then slow cooked it for I'm gonna say like seven-ish hours and that was just enough time for them to finish. So once they were all done, I shredded them all by hand. I usually use my KitchenAid mixer, but with the bones in, I usually don't do that. So I peeled off all the skin and then did the um, shredded the meat as well. And I actually saved all the bones from it. You can see that a gallon size bag up there. I took all the bones and put them in there. I actually made chicken stock with it. So just put that in my slow cooker with a bunch of water and some spices and cooked that for like eight hours. And that made a whole bunch of broth that I then used for a bunch of other recipes that week. So here's what it looked like when it was all done. That's how much chicken I got from all nine pounds. And then I have all the bones in there. I just stuck that in the fridge and then cooked it all in the slow cooker like a day or two later. So now I'm just measuring out exactly how much chicken I have. I need about six cups each for two of the recipes. So I'm just measuring that out here. I ended up getting 12 cups, which I, I put six cups in each container. Then I had two cups left over. So I put the extra two cups in a quart size freezer bag and put that in the freezer for later. And I'll probably use that for like quesadillas or burrito bowls or something like that. So 14 cups total of chicken, which actually was not that bad. Um, considering they were only 99 cents a pound for the split chicken breasts. 
So the first recipe I'm making is the chicken pot pie. So you can see the recipe right there. I actually doubled the recipe. So it says three cups of chicken, but I actually used the six. And then, like I said, doubled everything. So the first thing I did was chop up one onion. The recipe also called for two bags of like the mixed vegetables, but Aldi didn't have them. I just bought one whole bag of peas and one whole bag of corn, which ended up working out. Then I melted one stick of butter in the big pot and added the onions. Then I added a cup of mushrooms and stirred it all up just to kind of cook it a little bit. After it started to cook some, I added some white whole wheat flour and then some salt. I'm making a roux here at some point. Mix that all together. Then I added some milk and some water and mixed that around and then I let it cook for a few minutes or so, probably like 10-15 minutes until it started to get thick. While that was cooking, I got the one pie ready that I was going to make for dinner. I just ended up using regular refrigerated pie crust for this one. I'm, I don't think I've ever made my own pie crust to be honest. I'm sure it's not that hard. I'm sure you guys will let me know. Once I got that boiling, I added a cooked bag of the peas and corn. And I let that kind of sit and mix together for a little bit until it got a little bit thicker. Then I added the chicken and just let that sit for a few minutes as well. Now at this point, it was starting to look like a lot of mix and you're gonna see here in just a minute. So I started by putting, I think it was like two or three cups in the actual pie and then like half and half, like one here, one there. Then I realized I made too much mix. So you can see my pie is completely full. So I had to go get like another container. I'm gonna show you here in just a second, but oh my goodness, it made so much. So what I realized looking at the recipe, it was supposed to make two uh, smaller sized pies. I doubled it so I actually got enough to make four pies. Oh man. So I just set everything else in a bag for now and put the top layer of the pie crust on and got ready to put it in the oven. So that went in the oven while I tried to mess with the rest of the mix. So see, two standard nine inch pies was for the original recipe. And yeah, I got quadruple the pie mix. So there's the finished pie and then the rest of the pie mixture in the bags. I think it's like two or three cups in each bag. So then the pie actually serves six. So just watch me try to evenly cut it into six pieces. I actually did pretty well, surprisingly. But this actually ended up really, really good. Um, for my first attempt at a pie. We served it with a salad. I put the rest of that mix in the freezer and I actually made biscuits, I think the week after and put just some of the pie mixture on top and that was really good as well. So I still have two more bags of that in the freezer. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. I don't know, maybe make more pies or do more biscuits, who knows, but that was not bad for the money I spent. 
The next recipe is chicken cilantro enchiladas. I did not double this recipe because it serves 10 and there's only three of us. So we figure five enchiladas per dinner, it's automatically doubled. So I started by cut, opening the cans of enchilada sauce and poured them into the bowl along with a little bit of chicken broth. Actually, it's the chicken broth that I made using all those chicken bones. I mixed all that together and just set it aside for now. Then in a larger bowl, I added all the chicken. This was six cups, like I said and then a bunch of green onions and cilantro that I had cut up earlier in the day. And then I had, I think, four cups of cheese, so I added about half of it to the bowl. Then I realized um, that bowl was too small, so I had to get a bigger bowl. And I decided there was not enough vegetables in it, so I broke up a bunch of spinach. You don't have to do this, but I had some spinach that was going bad, so I figured I would use it. Then I took one cup of the enchilada sauce mixture and poured that on top just to get it a little bit wet. And then I mixed it all together. I took two 8x8 eight eight casserole dishes and poured a little bit of the enchilada sauce on the bottom, like what you would typically do with enchiladas anyway. Then I took some tortillas and just made the enchiladas like you normally would. I put a little over a half cup mixture in each tortilla. I kind of figured there's a lot of mix in there, so I was wondering if I would be able to get more than 10, and I was right. After I got the five and five in there, I realized I had enough for two more enchiladas, so each one actually got six. It's pretty awesome. I poured the rest of the enchilada sauce over both containers and then topped them with the rest of the cheese. One of them went in the oven and the other one is going to go in the freezer. You can see it sitting right over there cooling off. So there are the enchiladas. They actually turned out really good. And I have a huge problem getting out enchiladas from the casserole dish. Anybody else like that too? This actually turned out really good, especially with the spinach. We served it with tortilla chips and salsa and random broccoli. Yes, I didn't have anything else to go with it, but it actually went pretty well. The next recipe is buttermilk herb chicken breast. This one was super easy because I had chicken in the freezer anyway. It says eight boneless split chicken breasts, but I didn't use that many. Each of those bags has about two pounds of already frozen chicken. I figured that would last us or give us maybe like six servings per bag. So I added all of the stuff into a bowl just for the marinade. I don't really measure like the honey and the Dijon mustard. So I put all the seasonings in there, stirred it all together. This one was just for one bag. So I mixed it all up and poured it into the first bag. And then I did the exact same thing for the other bag. And that was simple enough. I just put both of those back in the freezer. And when I was ready to eat one of them, I just took it out and got ready to cook it.
I ended up grilling these chicken breasts and since they were really thick I cut them in half to make them cook a whole lot quicker. And I ended up using my George Foreman grill. I love using this thing for grilling my chicken or grilling other things or even like quesadillas. So I was able to put all two pounds of the chicken in the George Foreman. It only took maybe 10 minutes to grill all of it. Using a food thermometer, they have to be 165 at least in order for them to be fully cooked. And most of them were. I ended up just using these as straight up grilled chicken, just used with some side items. But you can also put them in salad, you can top like burrito bowls, or however else you want to use them. So see, they kind of turned out perfectly. So I have just regular chicken. I also made some quinoa using more of that homemade chicken broth. And I also roasted up some cauliflower to go with it. And it actually turned out to be a super good dinner. That chicken was nice and soft. Um, the buttermilk made it really nice and soft and super delicious. And the last recipe is turkey pecani pie. I did not actually double this one. I paid attention this time and see how it says two small pies? It definitely made two small pies, I'll show you. But I started out with some ground turkey. I pre-chopped my vegetables earlier in the day, so I am cooking it with some onion and some garlic. Once that was all finished cooking, I just drained it and then added the rest of the vegetables. And it said pecani sauce, but I used salsa. I'm sure there's a difference, but um, it still tasted good. And then I also added some olives to it, just like the recipe said. I didn't feel like chopping them up, and I'm glad I broke them apart because there was a pit in one of them. Holy cow, I can't imagine like taking a bite out of that. That was a huge pit, holy cow. Then after adding like the rest of the seasonings like salt and cumin, I added some cornstarch as well and then just mixed it all together with some cheese. This was about one cup of shredded cheddar. I believe this was about three cups each of the mixture. So I put them into two separate containers. I actually pre-made the mix ahead of time because I knew the pie would bake for at least 20 or 25 minutes. So I wanted to get a head start on it. And it's basically like the chicken pot pie. I, I bought another box of pie crust and put all of the mixture inside the pie crust. Now I'll be honest with you, John, when he got home, he wasn't too sure about like the pie. Um, he's like, I like chicken pot pie, but taco pie, I don't know. But yeah, you make it just like you did the chicken pot pie. I cut just a couple little slits in it to help it bake and then stuck it in the oven. I think I only baked it for like 20 or 25 minutes. The recipe said 35, I believe, but the edges were browning right around 20. And when it came out, I know the, the, the top of it, like the middle of it, doesn't look done, but it was pretty firm. And once again, had to cut it into six pieces. Apparently, I'm just not really good at cutting them evenly. I think I did pretty good though. But yeah, this actually turned out really good and even John said he thoroughly enjoyed it. So we topped this with some sour cream 
And I also put salsa on mine the second time too. I didn't show it here, but we also served it with a side salad. I also roasted some zucchini uh, at a later date as well to go with the leftovers. But yeah, that was super good. So I hope this inspired you to start making your own freezer meals to set aside for your busy seasons that are coming up soon. So I've got four other categories that I'm gonna do like once this other series is over and done with. I have soups, I have the beef and pork, I have pasta, and then desserts, and probably even some breakfast too. So which one of those do you wanna see next when I start this series up again? Can you leave me a comment and let me know? If you wanted to purchase this book, once again, it's called Don't Panic, Dinners in the Freezer. I've got an affiliate link down in the description if you guys want to go ahead and purchase that and look through it yourself. You will definitely not regret it because I have not disliked anything I have made from this book so far. If you wanna see more of these and all the other awesome videos that are coming out in the next month, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Can you like this video and ring that bell so you guys can be notified when all the those videos come out as well as all my grocery hauls, my recipes, and my meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later.